everyone and welcome back to the Pottery Corner, my studio down on the south coast of England near Chichester. Welcome back, thanks for watching. Um, today's topic is kiln stilts and kiln props. Um, I have used various and many in the past and I thought that I would just try making my own because obviously they're quite expensive. And if you want to glaze your piece in the round, you have to use something to keep the glaze off of the kiln shelf. So this particular platter, I have left a very small patch, um, like you would on the bottom of a mug, on the bottom of this platter, so that when it has stood in the kiln, it has stood on this unglazed section here. But obviously, on a platter like this, it looks a bit odd um, because it doesn't really have an end and a beginning. It just looks a bit odd with a, with a white circle in the middle on the back. So it is nice to be able to um, glaze right the way over the whole piece. Um, but in, in order to do that, you have to stand your work on um, kiln stilts. So this goes underneath the piece and the piece sits on the kiln stilt, like so. Now, you've seen before in my kiln opening videos, I'm sure, that when, when they come out from the kiln and I remove the kiln stilt, it leaves a very nasty shard. Um, and in fact, you can see on the back of this piece that there are three um, corresponding um, points on the platter where that ceramic stilt has come off and left a little bit of the stilt and then I have to file that down. So you just file it down with a, with a metal file or indeed you could do it with a Dremel. You're never going to get away from having those three points on there because there's no way of um, glazing a piece all over and putting it in the kiln to, without it sticking to the kiln shelf. So. These ceramic um, kiln stilts are quite expensive and whilst you can use them several times, after a while this happens and the stilt will have um, a residue of the glaze from the previous piece. Some of them are worse than others, so you can see like on, on this one there's a bit in the centre um, and then there's bits on all of the tips of this particular stilt. So you can use them probably twice, once one way up and once the other way up. But after that, they're really pretty useless. So, um, you know, I do end up throwing them away. And just to give you an idea of pricing in England, the three inch um, versions of these, these are probably a two and a half. The three inch versions of these are £13 for 10. So they're quite expensive. They're not massively expensive, but they are quite expensive. Um, you can also buy the uh, slightly more, um, the larger stilts like this one that have the wire in them. And I'm gonna talk about that in a minute. And as you can see from this one, this has been commercially made. OK, so this is a commercially made kiln stilt with um, nichrome uh, wire that goes into the kiln. But as you can see, over time, then the wire will bend. Now, you can bend it back um, using a pair of pliers and just pull it up. But after a while, the wire gets very, very brittle and you'll find that you'll be bending it back and it will just snap off, in which case it then renders this prop useless. So again, you can buy these, they're quite expensive um, and actually you can make your own. So that's what this video is about today. We're going to look at making our own kiln props. So in the first instance, you're going to need two things, your clay body. OK, so I am just using clay out of my scrap box. Um, in fact, the slabs that I have rolled out if you've watched my previous videos about monoprinting, 
Um, and if you haven't seen them, there is a playlist on monoprinting and indeed um, there's a, you know, a library of um, videos for you to watch on various techniques. So do have a look. Um, so I use up the scraps from the monoprinting because once the clay has had the monoprint on it, obviously it's got pigments and colours on it and I can't then use it for anything that I'm building piecewise. But if I'm making things like cookies um, for the kiln or these kiln stilts or whatever, I can use up that clay so it's not wasted. Um, so that's what I've been using. And I leave the slab purposefully quite thick. So that is probably half an inch. Um, and then basically what I have done is I have um, these, as I say, commercially produced kiln stilts that I have already. And I have just taken a cardboard template um, from the shape of that because it's just as easy to draw around something um, as not. And then what I've done is I've used a pin tool to just mark in the uh, template where the wire needs to go. Okay, so I've literally just drawn round and it's almost like a propeller shape, I suppose. If you don't have one of these, um, you could always take a, a, an image off of the internet and work from that. But basically it's like a triangular propeller shape. Um, and then, as I say, you can put your points on where the wire is going to go. And if you want one in the middle, then obviously you can pop a, a, a hole in the middle. So I'm just using templates that I've made in various sizes. So this is the smallest one. This is the medium one. And this is the large one. And on the large one, I have actually put space for more wire. Um, so I've got one in the end, one in the middle, and then one in the centre on each arm. Um, because obviously if you're putting something that's heavy on there, it's going to need more support. Um, so talking about wire. Now, there obviously is wire in your kiln um, from the elements. And recently I changed the elements in my Rhoda kiln. Um, and the elements are pegged, pinned into the um, ceramic side brick with nichrome wire. So I haven't actually bought any nichrome wire because I very carefully saved all of the pins that came out of the kiln to reuse them. So perfect recycling. But if you are looking for nichrome wire, you can buy it on Amazon. Um, I've printed this off just for information. And the nichrome wire that I'm using is about two millimeters thick so it's quite uh, a large gauge um, i would say it's probably a 12 gauge so you're looking for nichrome wire which is spelt n for nigel i c h r o m e nichrome so it's basically got an n i in front of the word chrome and it's basically wire that you can use in your kiln and can be fired uh, way past my stoneware temperature. So the stoneware temperature for my glaze wiring is um, 1230 degrees centigrade. And this wire can go up to 15, um, 1500 degrees centigrade. So it can go higher than my usual sort of cone five, cone six. So you could take it up to a cone seven. Um, so this is what they use in the kiln actually to make uh, the, um, the the pins that go into the side. So that's what I'm using, but that's what it is. And you can buy it online. Um, and it's, it isn't massively expensive. There's 16 foot of it on here, which is quite a lot. I mean, you obviously wouldn't need 16 foot to make a few kiln props. Um, but the 16 foot that's on here is priced at 15 pounds and 49 pence. And I suspect that as a potter, if you bought some in your early life, you would never need to buy any more. Um, so that's what I'm using. Now, I have quickly cut out from the slabs using the template, uh, the shapes, and, and I have left them purposefully rough. They don't need to be neat. They're just going to go in the kiln. Um, so I've just cut them out and I have marked on the surface of the clay, but without pushing down into the clay, the places where the wire is going to go, okay? And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the wire and literally I'm going to push it into that hole. I'm going to do it on the bench. 
push it into the hole until it hits the bench. I don't want it not touching the bottom because what will happen when something is standing on there is that that wire will push down. So it needs to be at the bottom of the prop. OK, so that when your piece is sat on the top of it, the wire doesn't have anywhere else to go. It's already at the bottom of your of your stilt. So I'll just pop this one in, push it in. I want it to be snug. So the fact that I'm struggling slightly to get them in is a good thing. OK, and I've made the pieces of wire identical sizes because obviously when you're putting something on the top of it, you want it to be straight. Um, and then let's just pop that down, make sure that that is upright. And that is it. And then all you have to do is bisque fire it. So once it's bisque fired, you can then use it underneath your work in the way that you would use one of these ceramic stilts. OK, try not to make the wire too high because it will bend um, so don't be too this is probably standing up by a centimeter over the top of the clay as you can see I wouldn't want it to be any higher than that because it, it will bend um, and depending what you've got on the top of it um, obviously if it's going to bend it might knock your pot over so be careful not to leave too much sticking out of the top and then your piece which is glazed right the way across the bottom will just stand like so on those three pins you as i say you will still end up with three pin marks on the back of your work from where the wire is um, but it won't be certainly any worse than the ceramic props and indeed it won't leave that nasty shard of, uh, of ceramic on the back that you've seen in my kiln opening videos is really very dangerous and, and you can cut your hands on it very easily if you're not careful and not wearing gloves. So um, a simple short and sweet one today really. Um, as I said about the bigger one, as you can see I've marked this up and because it's slightly bigger um, I've allowed for more uh, pieces of wire. Um, to actually make sure that there's a bed for that item to stand on. Um, you can kiln wash them. Lots of people ask me about kiln wash. Um, I used to do um, stained glass and when I did glass I would use um, kiln wash on my kiln shelves. But since I've changed back to my first love ceramics, um, I don't use kiln wash on my kiln shelves. There are several reasons for that. I find kiln wash um, creates a reasonable amount of dust when it is dry. So there's almost like a sort of a dusty surface. And I don't like that dust floating around inside the kiln with glazed work, because obviously it's got to go somewhere and it's, it's going to go on, on, the, uh, on the glazed work. If you get a chip or a bit that's, that chips off, it's got to go somewhere. So I tend not to use kiln wash. Um, most of the time I use slabs of clay, which I make into cookies. And indeed, if you look back in the back catalogue on the channel, you will find a how to make cookies for your kiln uh, video. So this one is slightly different because we're using the wire and we are making stilted um, props for specifically to put underneath um, things that have been glazed all over. So it's a way that you can actually glaze your piece all over. Indeed, if you knew that the glaze you were using, so say for instance, Amoco seaweed, which <laughs> is the one of the drippiest glazes and also palladium, Amoco's palladium, drip, 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 drips, which is wonderful where you want it, but not so wonderful when it gets to the bottom of your pot and fuses your pot to a kiln cookie. So in the instance of using a very drippy um, glaze and you know that there's a possibility that glaze will come down the side of your pot and go off of the bottom, you could use one of these kiln stilts to put the piece on, put the stilt on the bisqued cookie and you have saved yourself a problem of your piece sticking to the cookie 
and your cookie is protecting the kiln shelf which is underneath. So that's how I tend to do it. I almost double, double protect my pieces in the kiln um, because you get caught out. We all get caught out. You'll have seen the kiln opening videos and sometimes you'll get something that will drip that you didn't think was going to drip or you know it moves and it, it will it'll, it'll drip on one side where you weren't expecting it. So good way of protecting your kiln shelves, which as I say, the kiln shelves are the most expensive part of um, the kiln furniture. So you need to make sure that you are keeping those glaze free. So that's um, about it for today. Um, I wanted to just share with you, and you probably will have noticed <laughs> if you're regular viewers, and I know there are lots of regular viewers, and you are so sweet um, with your comments, that um, I have now reached um, monetization with YouTube. So I have over a thousand subscribers and over the allotted um, 4,000 hours of watch time. So that in itself is a major achievement and I'm really grateful to you all for tuning in to my channel and watching the content. So thank you very much. And you will have noticed that there are now adverts on my videos. And I'm sorry about that. I know they're annoying. You know, I watch a lot of YouTube videos myself, so I do know. But um, from the point of view of actually earning any revenue at all, and it is not a fortune, unfortunately, um, you do need to watch the adverts. So I would say very kindly, occasionally, when you have time, and I know that's not always possible, but occasionally, just watch through instead of skipping the ads and that will help me out and allow me to continue making content that you can watch and doing the tutorials. Some of the big tutorials, they obviously take a lot of um, preparation and um, filming and editing. And for this poor old lady, I have to tell you, I'm learning so fast all the tech that goes with um, having a YouTube channel. So I'm all you lovely uh, YouTube viewers, who watch my videos and then take the time to comment with a lovely comment saying how much I've inspired you. It really makes my day. I say it every time I know, but it does. So thank you very much. Thank you for watching. Have a look at the website, www.thepotterycorner.co.uk. If you live local to me, um, there are courses uh, advertised on my website. Um, and I have an Etsy shop as well. And I'm pleased to say, uh, that after um, uh, two or three weeks of changing over from my website shop platform to the Etsy platform, I have made a sale. Hurrah. So thank you, Thomas in, in Swansea. If you happen to be watching, thank you. He bought a very lovely marbled mug. So I do hope that the recipient, if it wasn't him, was pleased with it. So thank you very much for watching as ever. And I shall see you next week on the next one. You can always comment on any subject that you would like me to cover. Just pop a note in the comments and don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell. Thanks for watching everybody. Bye for now.